Welcome to the stream where Rad wears glasses. This is episode 12, Operation Schlaf. Uh, normally I'd start out saying some shit, but instead I'm going to say some other shit. Two days ago, so February 3rd, 2018, uh, one of my favorite Battletech authors died, Victor Milan. Um, some of you might know of his works, and those of you that don't, pretty much all of Pondo's character is based around those works. Uh, he wrote the trilogy of the 17th Recon Regiment, Count Machos Caballeros, and gave us this look into a part of the Free Worlds League that no one else ever does, the, the Trinity Worlds of Galisto and the other two that don't really matter that much because everyone's from Galisto. Uh, he wrote the books Close Quarters, Hearts of Chaos, and Black Dragon. Uh, there were some of the first ones I ever read, and definitely probably some of the best ones that have ever been written. And then he wrote some other Dark Age stuff, which really wasn't as good, but that's only because Dark Age was kind of... So, yeah, I mean, if you have a chance, consider checking out those books. Close Quarters, Hearts of Chaos, Black Dragon. I like them a lot, and a lot of this campaign is based around those kinds of works. Uh, other than that, let's let's do some introductions. We've got some new overlay set up after complaints about overlays, and you might notice some new rank emblems as people have finally achieved their full power. Also, uh, yes, Rad is trying to show off some new glasses here that he doesn't need to wear, but I want to remind everyone that Rad also didn't submit his paperwork, and so his character is not going to get paid the full amount. Uh -huh. <laughs> What because I, what are, what are you talking about? I've asked you three times for your oh, officer you score. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. So let's go That's ahead and fair. start with Sid while Rad desperately tries to finish his goddamn paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here. We're here. We made it. We, we are here. Made it. Welcome. Uh, it's been a fairly interesting week uh in video games and stuffs i actually i started i finally started playing kingdom come deliverance last night my god is that a mixed bag it's like everything about the gameplay i find to be just a shittier version of skyrim <laughs> i saw a few minutes of it today <laughs> there was a drunk knight who denounced the clergy and then went flower picking in a field uh, is that pretty much all of the gameplay? Like, am uh, I have I achieved yeah. peak gameplay no. watching there? Uh, well, it's so like the, the combat, the sword play combat is exceptionally anal retentive and vastly overcomplicated to the point where it is one of you like, oh, go kill these two guys. Well, that's not gonna fucking happen. I can barely survive a one on one fight, let alone 1v2. Uh, the bow, the, the bow hunting. Say, sequence where you use your bow there's no crosshairs there's no pointer on the screen to delineate where your arrow will end up i'm fine with that uh, there's massive massive amounts of shift more shift than you typically see in a game with 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 a bow and even when you launch it even when you know exactly where it's going to be it'll still go off in random weird directions there's some weird shit going on with that game it's buggy it's glitchy but the story the story is amazing <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. the story is good enough that it makes me want to forgive how shitty the rest of the game is i thought it was going to be like but the story is also shit don't buy that <laughs> i was yeah. expecting him to say mediocre <laughs> no the story is great the voice acting is phenomenally on point um it's basically the story and the voice acting and the deliveries is everything that we wanted Mass Effect Andromeda to be. Don't be a hater. <laughs> Listen, be. Mass Effect Andromeda wasn't like the greatest Mass Effect. In fact, some would call it the worst Mass Effect. But it wasn't. I mean, you defeated your own argument. No, I mean, listen. Not it. Not everything can be the best. Like it can't be the best, right? In fact, something has to be the worst. Yes. Uh, but it's oh, not the it, it's yeah. not a terrible game. It's just average. Yes, it is. You're a well, terrible actually, game. Uh, <laughs> Listen, Sid. While you're doing this, people are saying turn up your volume. I don't know if it's just you. I don't know if it's everybody. I don't know if it's the new sound settings. Who knows? I would ask you to turn it Mine? down with all that haterade that you're spewing. Are you talking to me or are you talking no. to Sid? <laughs> Sid. 
Let's see. Let's go to my recording devices here and see what I can do to boost the gain. Who knows? I just add skill level for these, right? Not my actual world. skill level. Yes. You want to get paid at your skill level, not your competency. <laughs> yeah, I do. Levels are maxed out. Let me see if I can use voice meter to bump it a little bit. Do, 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 do. While we do that, let's cut over to Pondo before he How's checks that? out for the rest of the afternoon. Pondo? How's that, Jeff? Is that louder? Yeah? Yeah. How's it going? It's going all right. Just, just listening to you guys talk about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we're, we're right there at that average normal day. I'm not a very opinionated person, so I got to just stay out of it. Nor do I like to cause fights with you guys. No matter how much you want to try to get me to fight, AP. I mean, I do want you to fight. You should fight for your beliefs, man. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. If you believe that Cowboy Bebop is actually a good anime, let's fight about it. I mean, it is. See? Now opinion. we have something to fight about. <laughs> I well, fight it to be entirely opinion. average in every way. I will agree. Uh, at this point in time, it's considerable not a very good anime, but when it came out... I mean, sure. People consider Trigun to be amazing when it came out. I went back and watched it now, and it's fucking horrendous. It's double, full of double, memes. Double, Don't double. get me wrong. There are some great parts. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, yeah. Uh, it's just a nostalgia factor. Literally, so. just the word double dollars is usually enough to get everybody in the room to smile. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Anything else going on with you, Pondo? You've got your show. I'm gonna intentionally get it wrong. Shadows over New Chicago. Streets of New Chicago. Yes. Sure. Uh, yeah, we didn't meet this week because one of them had family coming in. So that's fine. And uh, I wouldn't know anything about streams yeah. that don't happen because someone's not there <laughs> twice in a week. I don't know who's throwing shade at. It's not me. It's not, no, don't worry about it. It's EQ. It's always EQ. Oh, uh, okay. That's what I was guessing. Yeah. Uh, and then started my new job earlier this week. It's about that's going well. Excellent. Just have to get used to waking up early in the morning. Is the it one of you guys sending me messages? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck you, Rad. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, there's four, five. I clicked over 16. <laughs> I've been control Ving for a while now. <laughs> what an asshole. Just for that, I'm going to wait till the end of the stream to calculate what your actual <laughs> shit is because I got things to do, like run a goddamn stream. That's appropriate. Yeah, gonna, speaking of, <laughs> let's go ahead and fucking hear about your intro, rad, you asshole. Well, these are fake glasses. We know. Everyone all. knew the whole time. <laughs> we even talked about it. These are my broken father-in-law's glasses that I just picked up off a desk. I have 20-20 vision, so suck it. Um, other than that, I've had a crazy week. Um, my wife was in a, a car accident. Uh, That's fucking she, terrible. Yes, and uh, she's fine. She <laughs> Her... Her and my children are all fine. My daughter got a little bit of like seatbelt bruise. Uh, and my wife smashed her face up against the steering wheel pretty good as her seatbelt failed to lock and her airbag failed to deploy. So, uh, but she's okay. Uh, you know, she just, she just told all her students that she got in a fight uh, and it was fine. She, she got some street, street cred out of the deal, but <clears throat> she totaled her car. We found out yesterday. So they're going to total it out. So the Jeep is no more, and we'll have to find something new for her to drive, which kind of sucks because we were really enjoying only having one car payment. So uh, Rad will probably have to go back to work at least part-time to afford to continue to live. So uh, the the stay-at-home dad dream uh, dies just a little bit, but it's fine. Um, I'm cool with it. I was probably going to go back to work part-time anyway because uh, money's pretty cool. Doing stuff is pretty cool. Buying stuff is pretty cool. I like so, money. Yeah, so I was probably going to go back to work anyway, so it's not a big deal. She was a little stressed about it, but it's it's just a car. It's just money. It's no big deal. I want to I want to work enough to where she can get something that she really likes instead of feeling like she has to be stuck with some, like, you know. Some, yeah, something that we have to buy, like, cash. I don't want that to happen. So 
Um, Are she, you saying that a husband wants to get something nice for his wife? She's a nice lady. She deserves nice things. She so. does seem like that. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that that happens. Um, Despite your dorky love for Star Wars, she's always true. in those pictures with you yeah. at the theater. It's Yeah. And I, even though she liked episode eight, I love her anyway. So <laughs> that's just a testament. To Listen, you. chat was <laughs> like, Arthur's done, but now I'm fucking slain. Oh my god. <laughs> No, uh, that was just a joke. I liked episode eight too, so fucking fight about that, chat. <laughs> no, um, you're lying. <laughs> don't fucking troll Nobody chat with that shit. Eight. Um, I don't no, know. Eric Volgaris liked, liked episode eight. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's I, Eric Volgaris. He doesn't. I, count. I like liking things. Okay. <laughs> that's just, all right. I, I like. A, I like a lot of things that I probably shouldn't like. Uh, but Star Wars episode eight. I liked it, so come at me. I guess uh, I had a I had a uh, a week and change of military duty. That you, I mean, so that ended. I was at, actually broadcasted from the hotel last week. Some of you probably know I'm back home. All that's good. Uh, I got I got the news that I have to be prepared to walk out the front door on four days' notice to go anywhere the army wants me to go because I'm in a particular type of unit that has to fast respond to stuff. So everybody watch the news. Uh, if the show is no longer happening or I'm not on it, it's probably because I'm in North Korea. Uh, so, you know, it yeah, is that it, thing just kind of happens sometimes. Yeah, it just know. happens. I, I don't. I mean, I'll make a bold prediction here. I'm probably not going to go anywhere, but uh, it's only been of, like, what, 50 years? Yeah. A lot of other people might. It's, it's very funny, right? Because like everybody shows up and just wants to know what the fuck is going on every week. Like every month, it's always the same. Every month, it's always the same. Everybody shows up. Nobody knows what the fuck's happening. Uh, so every time I show up, 50% of the people are there like, fucking pack your bags. We're leaving tomorrow. It's, just, it's just set in stone. Might as well sign the contract. So, and so, and so. And other people are like, we're not going fucking anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere your whole damn career. Just fucking sit back, get some coffee, and fucking play on your phone. Because that's all it's going to be. Uh, so... Our, that's the day where we got red in the gotcha games yeah, it's <laughs> it's very divided so i could get uh, him hooked up on that fake grand order shit right that's there that's right i don't know what's gonna happen uh, i'm not gonna be uh trafficking any grab thars or whatever those things were that's for sure um no what? i lost on that one okay yeah grab thars no. hammer no that that is no nah, i probably said it wrong it's not important um other than that, oh, I will have to talk about the month of March with Arthur. So there may not be, I might not be on the show f for a couple weeks out of the month of March uh, because I have another military thing that's going to happen that I try to get out of and couldn't. Uh, so, yeah. It's always that's... great when people ambush me with that shit on stream, too. I, I knew that <laughs> that was your favorite thing. So, like, as a late Valentine's Day gift from me to you, so he's been waiting. He's actually Thanks, known buddy. for a month. I've but... known for since before this show started. No, so I'm just here, here's the deal, Rad. Did you know that in Japan there's this culture called I think it's called White Day, where people get Valentine's Day chocolates and then at a later date, you return a, a different gift to them. Like you give a gift back. So don't worry. At some point, a giant steaming <laughs> pile of shit is going to appear on your front door. Excellent. Excellent. And you'll know who it's from. I hope y'all enjoyed Butch McGurk. He's <laughs> not long for this world. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm going to try my damn just to get a babysitter to go see uh, so that I can go see Black Panther this weekend. Um I don't know if that's going to work out or not, but I, I'm hoping to be here next week excitedly prepared to talk about Black Panther. So, All right. That's um, good, because I'm probably going to talk about Black Panther in the most spoily way possible. I did I did also mention before the stream that... I'll the, probably bash on it. Yeah, probably. You'll just fucking it, turn your volume <laughs> down, you piece of shit. Um, <laughs> I'll probably... Uh, <laughs> what? I was talking before the, the stream... What is happening that, today? Uh, I don't know. I've just been throwing a lot of shade today. I the feel people, like we've been throwing shade at each other the whole stream. <laughs> the people in my play by post were like, yeah. what is happening? I don't even understand. What is, why is Rad being so I've mean? been throwing really? shit. Like, it's fine. Um, oh, I thought it was funny. We we're talking about it before stream that the internet is collectively losing their shit over the new Lego Millennium Falcon from the solo movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it doesn't look like, 
the you know the Millennium Falcon that we all love and know. And uh, everybody, I've seen I've seen a lot of memes of like uh, you know Han Solo where he's like I've made a lot of special modifications myself, and then the the tagline's just like dirt. He added dirt. <laughs> and it shows like this super clean Millennium Falcon in the trailers, and then the current like the only thing he's different is it's just dirty. Uh, so anyway, I thought that was pretty funny, but. I mean, in the EU, they were able to match the Millennium Falcon by its rust corrosion pattern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, That's how it's they also, were like, sir, there's a, whatever it was, YT2400 out there. And they're like, check, check the corrosion <laughs> pattern. It's, uh, it's also like over 100 years old in the uh, yeah. EU. But anyway, yeah. uh, in, the, in the new, the, the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, which... I don't know. I am not on board with this solo movie. Let me just come out and say that right now. I'm on board with Lando Calrissian. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm on board with Lando Calrissian as well. Lando. I'm not on board but with But he doesn't have a cloak. I don't fucking get it. What's the I'm goddamn not, point? Yeah. I'm not casting judgment right now. Listen, he can look fabulous on, with those fur shoulders. But he looks incredible. And he needs a cloak. What's the goddamn is, point? I guarantee yeah, you, at some point, he's going to wear a cloak. Dapper motherfucker with a cloak. That's just how it is. But uh, yeah, I my expectations are not high at all for this solo movie. But um, so the the new the the Lego one that came out is uh it doesn't have the forward mandibles. It's just like solid ship that comes to like a point in the front. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mm-hmm. have a gap in the middle. Uh, so that's where he puts all the smuggling shit. No one would ever are, think to look in the obviously modified part. People are acting like Lucasfilms is in front of you know burning bibles in front of the pope like it's the worst fucking thing that ever happened well, well, we already have episode eight so i mean <laughs> yeah. let's be honest we got episode one right like fucking yeah. jar jar binks so oh, i liked pod racing as a kid but jar jar binks was never cool hey, if you still take it under the context of jar jar actually being the dark lord of the sith that makes those movies pretty amazing i know it does oh, yeah. it does yeah. but i don't Thank think he is i feel like though george you know, lucas you- doesn't have that level of subtlety I am firmly in the camp that the prequels are garbage, uh, but I do think they have aged well. You know what I mean? Like when I go back They're, and I no, watch them see, again, they don't offend me as badly as they did when I first saw them. Like I'm like, okay. The prequels have some very strong parts. Yes. Dark some, Maul with the double do. lightsaber. Dark Maul is amazing. Um, I liked pod racing. I liked everything Obi-Wan. Uh, incredible. All of the Why politics. Anytime Palpatine's on the screen, he's fucking slaying it. Yeah. The one good, I mean, you know, and it's the, full of memes, just sh- <laughs> absolutely <laughs> shitty scenes the that you could spam it, prequel yeah, memes is, about. And then Samuel Jackson, yeah. The, the part where Anakin, they got you know, the part where Anakin turns to Darth Vader, like they got they got a, f- a few clips of that correct, you know, and like, and then it also nose dives in other places, but um, also when he goes out into the desert and kills all the sand people. Sorry, spoilers if you haven't seen this like twenty year old movie. Or what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> anyway? Uh, i thought that was like one of the best anakin like moments right like because you you like he finds his dead mom and there's like you know there's some gravity to that scene i'm like this is there's some good stuff in the prequels yes on a whole i believe they were a misstep but um they've aged well and i think you know episode eight probably age well also no well no (laughs) don't fucking troll like that (laughs) episode eight is poison all right, that's it. I guess I've pontificated enough. Someone else can go. Yeah, it's English's turn. Yeah, um, well, the Joel, no, I'm English Woodkip, and I've been addicted to freaking Monster Hunter World of late. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you got addicted to such a bland game. <laughs> it's not bland, for God's sake. The story's pretty good compared to the Monster Hunt to the old Monster Hunters. And from w- what I've researched, it's it's not going to be the first Monster Hunter game coming to PC because that belongs to Monster Hunter Frontier. It, but it's going to be the first canon Monster Hunter game to PC. But yeah, it over of the overall, it's a fun game, and yeah, I'm. But I'm sadly getting to that point where I'm starting to get my ass kicked by shit I already know how to defeat. And it's, yeah, I'm going to be taken tomorrow off of Monster Hunter. But all in all, my week's been pretty good. All right. Excellent. My week's been fucking awful. I've been sick constantly. I've been getting my ass kicked constantly. 
I have nothing good to say. Uh, Poor AP. Yeah, yeah. Also, I've only been sleeping like three hours a night, so I've been writing so much for this show and for the new stars is that numbers and for uh that other campaign that i have the burning wheel one i never write anything for restart my players are all insane so they'll just do whatever the fuck they want yeah they're like yeah let's (laughs) just go to the weird sex cave and i'm like great that Uh, yep that's the thing uh sid and i have a new stream on saturday nights called sons of gold it's a Stars Without Numbers, which is kind of a um, kind of light science fiction, psychic bullshit. No wizards, no lightsabers, just guns that force your body to break apart at the molecular level when you shoot them at people. Uh, it's that Firefly kind of shit. with thunder guns. Uh, like I mean, you <laughs> wanted to be Firefly with thunder guns, but <laughs> I do want it to be Firefly with thunder guns. I'm still of the opinion that the Alliance <laughs> really wasn't that bad, and in fact was a pretty good government uh, in Firefly. Like all evidence. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you see the movie where they had like children that they were like poisoning and turning into human weapons? Like, yeah, but consider that we live in the real world, right? That kind of shit happens literally today with our own government, right? But we don't think they're good guys for it. I, no, we don't. But that's not the whole <laughs> government, right? People are like, yeah, the Alliance shows up with their cruisers and they sell people food and shit. And that's why they're bad for rationing food. And I'm like, yes, look at those massive city cruisers where people can go for medical care and provide police services and keep outlaws from stealing shit. I'm going to say that our sample size on the Alliance is not as It's pretty big. They, there's like a dozen episodes their and they're D&D never alignment. really the bad guys in any of them. Mm. The only time they're bad is when no rivers got the weird psychic stuff. And really, can you blame them for wanting to weaponize psychics? I mean, that's pretty much the goal of a million different stories. I mean, they did slaughter an entire police station just because they had that wasn't the alliance. The girl's face. That was no. That, that, that was, was the, the blue hands. Working. They're a mercenary group. Yeah, Look they, it up. They it's on the wiki. Of the alliance. No, they're not agents of the Alliance. They're mercenaries. They work outside the Alliance, and they were hired by those evil, corrupt Alliance officials who made so the they're psychic working for program. The alliance. They're working for certain senators, right? That's How like saying that's like saying if Marco Rubio is an asshole, then the entire U.S. government's an asshole. AP's always put himself on the wrong side of history. (laughs) The right side of history? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The whole fucking thing is a Civil War reenactment, and you guys are siding with the Confederacy. Hello? The fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. I'm neutral in this this argument. Didn't watch Firefly? No. Really? I've oh seen God. the movie. I haven't watched Firefly. I saw the movie where everybody mm, freaking dies. Yeah, I'm not sure the movie is the best place to start watching no, Firefly. It's really, it's really not. I mean, yeah, everybody died. Not everybody. Spoilers. Just wash. Spoiler alert. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> well, if you haven't seen yeah. it by now, tough luck. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, the preacher died too. So I guess a couple of them died. I mean, the preacher's actor literally died, uh, which is why Joss well, Whedon is up. until years later. Yeah, yeah, but that's why Joss Whedon has said since he died that the only way that they would restart the series is a conversation between Wash and Book. Look it up. He's he's on the w- record. <laughs> it's the two people who died are talking. It's a shame, too. Ron Glass is a fantastic actor. I mean, we've lost a lot of fantastic actors over the last few yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. Anything else for me to complain about? <laughs> Battletech comes closer and closer to being released. Mm-hmm. Has uh, it been announced? The release, uh, has the release date been announced? Nope. Nope. Talking uh, about- <laughs> I'm talking about both PC games. The Battletech Tactical Combat 1 and MechWarrior 5. Which are both supposed to be out this year. Really? That soon? Oh, okay. Yeah. I knew, the battle, I knew the, the turn-taking one was coming out soon. I didn't know Mercenaries 5 was that close. That's cool. I haven't felt genuine excitement for a video Sorry. game in a long time, but I am super fucking hyped for both of those games. I was actually just talking about MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries before the stream. Uh, such a good... Such about a good. the fucking 
killing an awesome in a sandstorm mission doing that with oh, a white yeah. mech and what a goddamn mistake that was ah uh, that game was amazing you can't get it anymore and i lost my copy of mech warrior 2 titanium edition you can download it illegally super illegally it wasn't released no, for free like oh super illegally it's no, not, not it's not been abandoned by Microsoft. They still own the IP on it. Like they oh. they released they Mech Commander and Mech Commander IP, 2. But but Mech Warrior, uh, Mech Warrior 2 and I believe Mech Warrior 3 are also considered abandoned wear now. I mean but the IP is still maintained, but that is not my understanding, dis- Sid. Those I'll, games I'll as is you. can be freely distributed. I'll fight you on this. I'll look it up. I'll find Forever it. Forever and ever. All right. Keeps Anything else we need to talk about? The Olympics? Anybody watching the Olympics? Nope. Summer Olympics okay. are better than winter. Passing. I actually like Winter Olympics better than Summer I like the Olympics. You are I'm a fucking heretic. Listen, it's okay to say that both Olympics are equally good, but to say that the <laughs> winter is better than the summer? What the fuck is wrong with you? Me and my wife are talking about the... Uh, Dude, Arthur, it's, it's on economics.com. Right? <laughs> like, because Winter Olympics are like almost only for rich people. Yeah, I agree. Like, really? I mean, how many winter sports are there where you don't have to be a wealthy person to participate in it? Whereas, like, take a summer Olympic, like, running. You could fucking grow up in the outback of Australia and become good at running. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, it's, I will big, say... Like, there's a big distance in the sports. Like, there was like, There was a very good moment in the ice skating where they started doing recreations from the anime Gay Boys on Frozen Water. Uh, and people were like, <laughs> Yuri on Ice. You don't know about that one? <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, no, I've heard of it. That's let, me, so let me tell you what the storyline's about, Rad. It's pretty uh-huh. intense. There's a guy named Yuri and a second guy named Yuri. And they're both I'm already, I'm already really in. gay, apparently. Okay. And that's it. It's just about gay figure skaters, from what I can understand. People really, I mean, really like the show a lot. And this was reenacted in some way. Yeah, they the okay. they reenacted all the Yuri on Ice scenes that they could. Uh, kudos, I guess. I didn't see that. I'm off. Don't worry. Now, anime okay. is is taking over all over. Man, my goodness. Sean White won a gold medal, guys. Nobody cares. All right, that's cool. I mean, cool. It's fine. <laughs> is that is it like his first gold <laughs> medal? Because that sounds like a surprise to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like being like huh tony hawk set a world record huh that's... okay well all right yeah it's yeah. like oh michael phelps set a world record yeah right, exactly all right mr i like the winter olympics it's better than the summer olympics i don't know anything about sean white. i just prefer cool. the winter Let's over the summer yeah. i don't know anything about sean white i don't Pondo is definitely a fall person. His favorite color is maroon. Pondo doesn't know anything about anything, and he has no opinions. He about likes not orange. Anything anything. Nope. <laughs> he would. He would like to defer I to am everyone purely else. Mit- I am purely neutral. That there's nothing that's purely neutral in this world, my friend. There is. I just say, shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's not neutral that's still neutral. taking a that's stance actually somewhat aggressive. That's neutral. yeah that's a pretty that's a pretty passive aggressive or maybe just aggressive aggressive <laughs> yeah, stance on neutrality all right i don't know some other way to haze people I feel like that's the subject of like a three hour long podcast we should get into someday great <laughs> tice thank you for the subscribe uh i feel like we're ready to get started We've gone an average amount of time during introductions, and we covered a lot. This week, we start uh, in the command center on board the Crow's Nest, the dropship of the unit. The bottom left-hand corner of the screen says July 16th, 3048. Is that what year we're in? Shit, now I'm confused. Yes. We're in 3048, I'm pretty sure, because we started in 47. after? Yes, uh Shit. there's two com technicians from the dropship that are watching like animated cartoons on the holographic war tank in the command center room. Uh is there and... someone playing Galaga? No, there's not someone. This is this is an Avengers. <laughs> uh and on the screen we can see someone that's just like, I'll find it. The winter's edge. And then the second person is just like 
no, it's the forbidden sword. <laughs> At that point, uh, the unit comes comes in. Uh, the four mech warriors that we have here, plus the Captain Crow, First Lieutenant, Crystal Loft, and also strangely following them is uh, Nine Lives, Sergeant Crimson. As she comes in, Crystal Loft just like points to the two contact is just like out get out uh and they immediately leave as they put the comm center the key command center in lockdown so that no one can get in or out oh this is serious okay all right <laughs> uh as everybody sits down they position nine lives to be directly behind bandito like crystal picks her up and like physically walks her over to sit her down and then whispers something in her ear uh, and and you can feel that there are two feet pushing on the back of your chair. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know what that is. Crystal just puts her finger in your face. It's like, Bandito? Uh-huh. If you do anything stupid, I've ordered the sergeant to hit you repeatedly. Yeah, I, f I feel the cattle prod right Great. behind me. Why? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say that was very neutral of you. <laughs> Crystal turns and puts a figure at Butch McGregor and is like, you shut up too. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Captain Crow moves to the other side of the holographic tank and stands there and looks at Maxwell Harridan. Turns off the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's been going the entire time. Just has, is just lit by the glow of the holotank uh, and says, Lieutenant Harridan, when we spoke last night, you had mentioned that you have a history with this man, this baron. Yes, sir, I do. Normally, I don't pry into such things with my officers or my enlisted men. However, it has become clear to me that this is not a military unit. This is my family. You all kill for me at my command. And if someone comes after a member of my family, they come after me. And more importantly, they've come after the honor of my unit. And so unfortunately, I must ask you to explain the situation last night. He gestures for you to, like, take the podium as he goes and sits down. Terridan steps up to the podium, hands clasped to the small of his back. As you know, that man, if you could call him such, does seem to know me rather well. Reason being is before I came to this unit, he was, for a short time, my lance commander. Their heavy lance was an elite unit within the Laren Commonwealth, and myself, freshly graduated from Nagelring, was promoted into this unit. I thought it was a, a great honor, as I worked very hard in school to get where I was, and I thought, I thought it was well-deserved. Turns out they needed someone new, someone fresh, someone green, to be a patsy. They had apparently launched, launched a plot to damage the Archon's power base and in so, doing so enrich themselves. I found out about this plot and I did my best to warn the proper authorities of such, but they were far quicker and far smarter than me. They'd already prepared for that and all I had done was bring call attention down upon myself where I was made to look like the guilty party as opposed to them. So while I was ostracized and ejected from the military, they were enriched from their actions. They cost me my future and my career. Kicked around for a few months before I finally came to you. Now here he is, a wealthy baron, obviously risen in stature from when I last saw him, most likely as a direct result of his actions there. 
And all he wants to do is to rub it into my face and probably eventually kill me when he's done playing around with me like a cat's playing with a mouse. I'm a liability to him. Because I am one of the few people that does actually know the truth. Why would he leave you alive? They thought they didn't. I see. <clears throat> so what happens when a medium mech is set upon by three heavies? You tend not to last very long, especially not against mech warriors of that skill. They'd called my cockpit and they thought that they had outright killed me, not knowing I had already ejected. Using the mask of the engine breach and the radiation to cover the signature of my ejection, they, did, they failed to notice me. I see. Well. Now that we've got the bad news out of the way, please take a seat, Lieutenant. So? As for the rest of you, I'm afraid that your sins have caught up to you. Staff Sergeant McGurk. Yes, sir. It's come to my attention that you are a veteran warrior with a unique set of skills that we will require for some time to come. Accurate. <laughs> I think he probably <laughs> smiles and but but instead of like the music being happy and upbeat it's like a single off-tune violin thing, and you see Crystal's head turn slowly towards it's you. like a record skip. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I am honored to offer you the first Mech Warrior commission that we have as Warrant Officer. I'll be placing you in charge of the basic training of the men in my unit. You have full access to any of the non-commissioned officers that you require in order to do this. And I am equally honored to accept your commission, sir. I appreciate it. And I'll stand up and give like a snappy salute. And uh, if there's like a, a, a walk up and like shake and take or whatever. Yep. Yeah. However formal it normally is. Like I do the thing. I mean, this is the first time any of you have been promoted to any serious degree. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sergeant Gray. Yes, sir. It's come to my attention that you are the unit's first and only ace. Believe so, sir. You, too, are something of a technical expert. And while you may lack certain field command skills, you are certainly uh -huh. a specialist in the act of piloting battle mechs. And so I, too, am honored to offer you a promotion to Staff Sergeant. Well, thank you, sir. Can I get up without being zapped by the cattle prod behind me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she kicks you. Get up. Just stay in there. <laughs> Is Betty to just cautiously gets up, preparing for maybe a little bit of cattle prod? I don't know. <laughs> Go over, does his salute, get his rank, and sits back down. Dr. Goldhirsch. You'll be skipping several ranks as I'm writing in that you are now a commissioned mech warrior. You have achieved that rank officially within the unit. Do your best to study the continued mech warrior tactics that the others in the unit display, and you will grow as a mech warrior as well. Thank you, sir. I am honored. For the rest of you, here are your paychecks. However, <laughs> Warrant Officer McGurk, <laughs> my executive officer informs me that you have not submitted all of your paperwork, so unfortunately we're going to have to get back to it. I'm certain that she did. <laughs> uh, for the rest of you, Goldstag, your new monthly uh, pay and the pay for this month is 41.25 C-bills. Uh, Bandito is 37.56 C-bills. And Death Wish is forty four fifty one C bills. That's a lot. Still paid the least, yes. Uh Crystal begins handing out all of your mech warrior proficiency rating and like officer uh recommendations. Uh all of them read that you are all 
green level mech warriors except for bandito who's actually come in at being a regular mech warrior she takes a moment to just be like now i see that many of you are extremely proficient at piloting and shooting a mech but that's not all there is to being a mech warrior you have no situational awareness or ability to control your mech and if you get caught in the field God forbid, none of you are going to be able to repair your mechs, so maybe you should take some time to work on that. And first lieutenant, yeah. congratulations on having your cast removed. Thank you, man. She goes back to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> then he raises his hands like, Can first you speak, ma'am? Sir, uh, Captain Crow just gives you a hand gesture. Can, can I get the cattle prod from by, from my back now? I feel like it's a little bit unnecessary. No, Staff Sergeant. I like Sergeant Crimson where she's at. Okay. My understanding is that she keeps you from doing anything. <laughs> You're wrong, wrong, but when was the last time I've done anything? It sounds like she's doing her job. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. Some sometime soon we'll find a good private in order to follow you around so that she can get back to doing her job. That's All right. <laughs> I slap him on the back and I'm like, "You hear that bandito? You'll have privates for the first time in your life." <laughs> just, just shake my head. <laughs> Uh, there's a buzzing from the door, and Crystal goes over and answers it. After a few moments, she comes back and says, Apparently, there's a message coming in. It's for you, Death Wish. Somehow, I'm not surprised. Would you Shall like to take this privately, First Lieutenant? Kind of half glance I mean, at the captain. Apparently you guys weren't so proud about my messages, so what's the big deal? You get kicked. <laughs> you, <laughs> you two get kicked immediately. <laughs> I, like, I like half glance at the captain without actually glancing at him and say, I don't think privacy at this point would serve anyone except the person that I suspect is on the other end of that line. Okay. Uh he calls up a audio only so you'll be able to see the visual but they won't be able to see you uh audio only data stream you get a secretary on the line who's like is this maxwell harridan speaking lieutenant please hold on the line for the baron <laughs> Uh, and then there's like the the theme of the House Mars in that plays for a few <laughs> seconds. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, 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 ba. There's like a these there's the flag of the Lyran Alliance that slowly gets um, resolved into the seal of House Marsden, and then it's Baron Hauptman Blake Marsden on. Ah, Maxwell, are you there, old boy? Speaking, what is Butch want? with you? He is. Oh, excellent. Are you doing okay, Butch? Um, beat the shit out of you last night, just to remind yeah, I'm, you. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. <laughs> you guys got in a fist fight. <laughs> oh, that's right. He hit you with a full counter. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm uh, yep. Uh, never recovered so well from from the pillow fight that we had at the uh, at the you ball. See, he starts laughing immediately. <laughs> Ever the infantryman, <clears throat> Lieutenant Harridan. I was hoping to speak with you privately on a matter. Very well. Give me a moment, and I mute it. And then you do nothing, right? I, I can see how this goes. <laughs> Give like a ten count. I unmute it. Very Have you well, considered turning on the camera, Maxwell? I'm sorry, there's no camera in my quarters. Sergeant McGurk was with you in your quarters? Just how close are you with your non-commissioned officers? What do you want, Baron? Ah, back to Baron, then. 
It seems that there's been a misunderstanding between us, Herodin. And I wanted no, to no clear it up. No misunderstanding. No misunderstanding at all. I think uh, when your large lasers were drilling into my cockpit, your, the understanding was quite clear. I have nothing to say on that particular matter. Of course you don't. It has been resolved by the Lyran courts several times. I will say this. Haven't you noticed lately that Lyran intelligence has been involved in all of your jobs? Oh, indeed. As I expected they would be. And yet they've been ever so helpful in providing you very lucrative contracts. Despite you being on a blacklist. To be Maybe honest, I never thought much into it, nor did I really care. I might be less of an enemy than you think. You did try to kill me. I have nothing to say on that matter once again. Of At course. At this point, Bandito is just like taking out a pencil of paper. Starting his conspiracy wall lines <laughs> now. <laughs> well, there are two more matters to discuss, Maxwell. I was hoping that your unit might engage with my unit. At some point, perhaps in some simulated recreation, even if you'd rather not fight our mechs directly, I could rent out one of the local mech arcades. We could have a little four-on-four. Four. That's a thing? They're in, oh, I'm yeah, not... mech arcades are hugely popular in the Battletech oh, okay. universe. Yep, they strap you into a pod, and you, like, fight it out, and, like, if you fall over, the whole pod tilts, so you're like, oh, shit! Sounds awesome. Yeah, it is. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, McGurk gives uh, the lieutenant, like, the Obama not bad face. Like, <laughs> I'll cover all of the costs, Maxwell. I'm sure your unit could use some training. And what purpose would I, what reason would I ever have to engage with you in such a quote unquote sport? There. Are some things men can only mission, say to sir. each other through combat, Maxwell. I'm not here for your amusement. I'm here to do a job. <laughs> I, too, am here to do a job. But I do have something amusing to inform you of. Uh, the video stream gets a... Are you dying of a terminal illness? Gets a data packet. <laughs> Why don't you open that file, Maxwell? I scan it for viruses. All right, yeah, it doesn't come back as any viruses. It's actually pretty small. I scan it again with a different malware scanner. <laughs> yep, still no viruses. <laughs> it's like I hit it with malware bytes and Bitdefender. <laughs> so, so while you're doing that, he's like, I know you're stunned by the news in it. By your silence, I can tell. Oh, no, I'm actually just scanning it, to, scanning it for viruses to make sure you're not trying to upload anything untoward into our computer banks. Oh, it's rich text format. You can do a lot with text these days, son. <laughs> I open it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say, Bandy, it was just, it was just like, all right, let's just get... Uh, it's an invitation to a wedding. Uh, Baron Blake Marsden to uh, the heiress... Maxwell Harridan. Oh, okay. ...of the House of Harridan. To your own wedding. To your older sister. <laughs> we'll be brothers soon, Maxwell. I've set the date. <laughs> just made, just like, oh, Christmas in a year and a half, I'll be wedding my fiance, your older sister. I assure you, the relationship came as quite a surprise to both of us. But you could tell the whole time he's smirking like a gigantic asshole. I disconnect oh, the line. Shit. All right. <laughs> well, uh, you get all my you get several ready. more text messages. Like, are you there? I was hoping <laughs> to hear some reply. Man, that's. It's not like I'm asking you to be my best man or anything, but also <laughs> about that training. It's like I hey. turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, how about that arcade? That arcade thing sounds fun. If I do say so myself. I wouldn't necessarily say, hey, let's go jump in with RMX, because that'd be a terrible idea, even though he's paying for the cost. It's like, as the surgeon's be... still talking, I swivel in my chair and face the captain. Permission to be excused, sir. Uh, you are excused. 
Uh, as you're leaving, because the doors are locked, because the whole command center is in lockdown mode, Crystal disengages the lock and then, like, grabs your collar and holds you at the door. Oh, Lieutenant. I think I finally found someone that I hate even more than you and your unit. I would That's appreciate nice. it if you took up his challenge. Uh oh, we lost Red. All right, we got Red back. Okay. There we go. But no cam. Oh, there we go. Are you making that an order, Lieutenant? It's not an order, Maxwell. One of these days, I will kill that man. That sounds like premeditated murder, and I didn't hear that. <laughs> she lets go of your collar and turns around. But for now, all he wants is to, as I said, play around with us like a cat does to a mouse. There's no honor to be had here. There's no furthering of the unit to be had here. All it serves is to dredge up the past and things that are better left where they are until they can be dealt with properly. <laughs> so she turns around and she's like, listen, I've seen your proficiency reports. Any mech piloting that you could get in is definitely a bonus. I won't order you to do this, but it would help if you covered all the costs. That's all I'm saying. Maybe. <laughs> like, her attitude completely changed. She's just like, our finances are... We don't have any mech simulators on board, Maxwell. <laughs> And that kid is proving to be somewhat of a challenge. Very well. I just I mean, look back. At, I look back at McGurk. Wait, what if, kid? Wouldn't it be like a bad idea if we you know, had our? Because what if our mechs are really damaged and we have to wait for them to be repaired? And then something happens, we can't. She's use like, our mechs. our mechs are really damaged, and we have to wait for them to be repaired. <laughs> So what do we, it's, we can't use our so mechs. So while you say that, it cuts to the mech bay where like there's an armless wolfhound, the cockpit's <laughs> open, and there's like a kid sleeping in it. Uh, I, had no, I had no idea. So it was like two months like, after still being repaired? No, okay. you, this has only been two weeks. Oh, mm -hmm. it's two weeks? You, oh, need, okay. you need another oh, month and a half before your mechs will actually be able to walk out of the bay again. Most of you. Oh, Some yeah, of you. The Wolverine's fine. Yeah. The Wolverine and the Panther are okay. Well, I mean, we don't really. It's have a much mech mechs. simulator. They strap you into a pod. Uh, okay, we're talking about. I thought they. I thought we were talking about the actual mech fight, not the mech simulator. She okay. just gestures yeah. behind you to crimson, and you start hearing the sound of a taser being pressed. Like, mentally contemplates if it works to keep going or not. I just look back, Sergeant McGurk, if you'd be so kind as to set it up. I I I, I cheers at him with my beer can that I've very you, discreetly now. Crystal like, like turns towards you and is like <laughs> Warrant Officer McGurk, are you drinking beer on duty in my goddamn command center? It would seem so. <laughs> to be fair, Lieutenant, he did ask permission first. I, I was told by my uh, first line supervisor that uh, that I was approved for all Butch McGurk uh, activities. Is that what we're calling it now? Butch McGurk activities? All McGurkisms were. Uh, well, McGurk, <laughs> as captain of the ship, allow me to make it clear that when you're on duty and in the goddamn command center or the bridge, you're not to be drinking. And I'd appreciate Roger it if uh, you could be a little better about throwing up in space. Or the. <laughs> Well, I'll be uh, better at it. I mean, I could try to get better at it. <laughs> she just turns and be... gives you a look of total disgust. Oh, yes, ma'am. Get better at throwing up in the goddamn bridge and don't drink goddamn beer in the goddamn this place. God damn it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. God damn, yes, ma'am. I walk off. And is this one is like, why doesn't he have a cattle prod behind him? <laughs> Why is it me that has the cattle prod? I feel like slowly people just start leaving the room. <laughs> I'm still here because I'm threatened by cattle prod. <laughs> by the time you turn around several minutes later, Crimson's gone. 
Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, like, she has, like, like a duck out the door. All that arguing was going on, I just, like, turned and walked out. Nothing else for me? All right. Yeah, it was all, it was all strategic. I made a scene so that the lieutenant could just walk off. <laughs> I'm constantly throwing myself under the bus for Lieutenant Harridan. I mean, sure, that's how you want to interpret it after the fact. <laughs> yeah. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> he always acts like an ass, and then his self-justification is, I'm such a goddamn good NCO. And he's like, wait a minute, I'm not even an NCO anymore. I'm such a goddamn good warrant officer. Harridan sees right through it. He's like, what an asshole. McGurk gets to be McGurk again. <laughs> Yeah, now that I this isn't a that, show apparently. about personal growth. <laughs> now that I'm in charge of fucking privates again, shit's gonna get real. I think that's probably first, the next thing we see is is yeah. like you on your first day of private training school. <laughs> There's like two new recruits who they've picked up from local uh, from local levies in order to replace the two members of the squad who got killed. Uh, and one of them's just like, yeah, I heard that guy's a pirate. I don't know why they keep him around. The other guy's just like, I don't like the look of that guy. What an asshole. This is, uh, the, 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 the wolfhound, wolfhound pirate. pirate. Yep. Halavi so Crossroads. So what is his rank in the unit? Uh, he's been given the rank of mech warrior. Uh, and his new call sign is howler. So he's not an enlisted person. He's not like with, he's not with my group. Uh, he's no, he's not. But he's okay. a he's a mech warrior from a different lance. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, I feel like almost everybody that's here, like, they're well aware of what it's like, what life is like under Butch McGurk's tutelage. These guys, these two new guys, are completely new. They literally joined the unit today. Okay. So when um, you join, they're, when you come into whatever training yeah. room, they're talking have, to each other. They're ignoring you. They don't even I know who you are. I have the platoon sergeant or whatever. I have them all like, you know, I get them all no. to fill them up like in front of their bunks or whatever. Uh, and that's when I walk in and I was just like, <laughs> I walk in uh, in my Hawaiian shirt and like uh, my socks and flip flops. Uh, and uh, I walk up to, um, I'll walk up to somebody who knows me. And, I, and I'll be like, how the fuck are you doing today, soldier? Uh, let's see here. So, And then, and then it, I'll walk off in the middle of an answering. <laughs> so <player>. it's, the <laughs> unit's, it's the unit's adjutant, Blake Howe. He's just okay. like, sir, I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have expected that. And I, and, I, and I walk up to the next person and I do something similar. Like uh, I, I walk right past them and I go and start looking at their bunk right and like slap their pillow off of their bunk and i'm like jesus h christ like if i had known that i was gonna walk into a urinal this morning and see piss all over the goddamn place i would have worn my rubber booties this place looks like a fucking shithole and i just start i start throwing shit all over the place and they, they all can't move they have to like stand at attention and stuff and I'm trying to elicit a response from like I'm trying to get. Of course, to the like, two new guys. To like I mean, when a you bit or just do anything. No, right? no. The, listen, the two new guys. As soon as you touch one of their stuff, they're both just like, "Hey, you can't do that." I immediately stop what I'm doing and get like right in their face. <laughs> Guy just like balls his fist up. He's like in a boxing stance. He's like he balls his fist up. I yep. punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, punch him in the face. The other no, guy's just, just to the other one right next to him. <laughs> the other guy's about to tackle you from behind. So when you turn around, it's almost like he's hugging you. Okay. Yeah, I, I uppercut elbow him in the mouth, and then I walk off and I go to somebody else and I start hassling somebody else. I, I, I want you to make a career soldier roll real quick, <laughs> just to see how this goes for you. I feel like this is 1980s basic training. It's not like modern day basic training. Oh yeah, yeah. What's that? What's that YouTube channel about the drill sergeant throughout the ages? <laughs> it's like, oh, God yeah, damn, I yeah. love that guy. Yeah, so That's good. Exactly what it is. <laughs> just, just put uh, your phone away. I, I can't tell you to, to get off it. Just, just put your phone. <laughs> just, just put your phone. <laughs> I own you now, sergeant. <laughs> this is my army. <laughs> Is this a, the full metal jacket, five minute long? No, no. This is this guy there. that does recreations of. Yeah, I forget of... his name. He's fucking great, though. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. A slap on Titan? No, it's uh, eight. Uh, what's your what's your bonus? Eight, 
my bonus is pretty good. It's a what is this? Soldiering? Yep. Soldier career. Plus five. Wow. Okay. So, so you have a thirteen. Yeah, yeah, it goes amazingly. Like you beat the shit out of these two guys, <laughs> like just punching and uppercutting them. Uh, and like as you get done terrorizing everybody, all of the sergeants and uh, corporals who were here in order to make you look better or whatever, right? Are, well, are like, all, sorry, after it's all done and like I've I've thrown my scene right, like they all get down and I PT the shit out of them for like forty five <laughs> minutes because those two dudes right like and i make it very clear i'm like we're all going to learn a lesson together we're going to learn the value of teamwork so that we we can all grow and learn together and i'm real fucking sesame street about it right like so they do like a push-up and they come up and they're like a is for apple and they do another push-up and they come up and they're like b is for banana and like we go through all this fucking hoopla over uh, these two dudes so that everyone suffers because of them. So that when I walk out, I don't say anything to these two guys that I hit, right? Like I, I'm going to let exactly the, no the Blake of the unit like Blake Hal problem, just right? just like takes him aside and is like, listen, you guys <laughs> made life real hard for as you're like leaving. Yeah. You can hear somebody like closing the door and dogging it behind you. Uh, and it's clear that the rest of the the non-coms that you left in the room with them are like hassling these guys right in the same way that they have been hassled in the past yes i feel like they, the everyone other than the two new guys already knew exactly yep. what was going to happen right like and they're probably not mad about it because like this is this, this is, is daily pt they have, for them yes this, they've come to expect that and 45 minutes <laughs> was probably not a big deal deal to them but it probably was a big deal to like the two a-holes that like aren't used to military service so um yeah so like it was all very intentional and orchestrated and like the ncos in the room probably already like i probably had a conversation with them beforehand like this is what's going to happen so yeah. like nothing was it was all very like carefully calculated exactly uh anybody else got oh bandito you have you have your outstanding monetary issues by the way you got a bill from comstar for twenty thousand c bills yeah yep I, I pay it. All right, excellent. Well, I mean, you pay it, and you you get back like a Comstar approved and a thumbs up uh -huh. emoji. Do you have twenty thousand credits? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't. Well, not anymore. The only thing, but... Yeah, I mean, the only <laughs> thing I bought was that uh, that training for the rat, the vehicle training for yep, the flamethrower, so that she doesn't die that badly in Pack combat. Rat. Pack rat, yeah. <laughs> It's like, all right, yeah, that's that's a thing. I'll never be able to kill that son of a bitch since he's a public fi figure. But I'm mean, sure you can. Just don't get caught. That's no, I wouldn't be able to get away with it. I know it. Yet, give it time. All I do is have to wait for the right time, the right place, and hope that this is my moment. What better place than here? What better time than now? All hell can't Kenneth stop Ross? me now. Kenneth Cross, you gonna come at that dude, <laughs> Doctor, Doctor, Someday. Doctor? Uh, mm. What do you do after meaning breaks up? Um, let's see, nothing really much to do, but I'm gonna go speak to the um, Baron in the. Um, is it? A, is he a Baron? Yes, he's a Baron. Which which mech, Baron mech are you bay. talking about? The one the in your bay. unit? All right, yeah, yes. Uh, he's down in the mech bay, and he's grumbling. Uh, mm -hmm. He's just like, goddamn Aztecs, Blake forsaken sons of bitches. <laughs> Told you to put the ammo from here into here, not from there into there. You're going to get the rounds mixed up, and Bandito's going to be firing SRMs out of his auto cannon. Do you have any idea what would go wrong with that? Everything. That sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> I'm, in the back, I'm in the background. I'm just like, is that a euphemism? <laughs> well, I was like, wait, is that possible? Could it actually happen? Because that sounds cool. No, it's not possible, Sergeant. Sorry. Staff Sergeant, congratulations on your promotion. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry about the communications thing, Majik. Uh, yeah, no problem. How about you figure out how to get that god's forsaken child out of my mech bay which one he points to the wolfhound he's like that kid's been up there for four days and he hasn't left he's uh, been eating his meals up in there 
You know how hard it is to replace a mech arm with a smelly mech warrior in the goddamn cockpit? I bet you don't. I, I imagine it's pretty hard. Uh, I, you know, I know a little bit about mechanics of it, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go see with the buddy, all right? <laughs> so he laughs when you say you know a little bit about mechanics. He's like, I would not trust you to repair your own mech. Okay. You know as much about mechanics as I know about, I don't know, horseshoes. Wow. I had to go uh, there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just shake my head. Hand him a beer. He's like, oh, go take a five-minute break, buddy. I'm on duty, asshole. And besides, I wouldn't drink this pedestrian swill. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Cattle prod. <laughs> 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 And then the Russians walk by. <laughs> yeah. and I just go up to the mech and just like, all right, go up to mech. Just to be mech. clear, you got to climb like a thirty foot tall ladder in order to get to the top of the mech. Yeah, that's uh, fine. You get up to the top of the wolfhound. Make a dex check. And <laughs> no, he doesn't have a broken leg like you. He doesn't. Hey, have I fixed mine. I know. I know. I you sure, paid out I the make XP sure to for hook it. In the safety harness thing. Oh so yeah, of course, of course, of course. That's. <laughs> Because you know so, you're gonna get you're gonna, you're gonna get winded after like ten rungs. Of the ladder <laughs> no, he That's actually nice. has a good bot score and like you know oh, half the you, unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got a decent one. Uh, you climb up and Halvey Crossroads still in his like pirate jumpsuit, but with his Mech Warrior rank tags like clipped on the sides, is listening to music on whatever the BattleTech version of an iPod is. Uh, and maybe snoozing, it's or maybe just pre I'm gonna say, it's 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 <laughs> pretending yeah. to be asleep in his cockpit chair, uh, with his arm like wrapped around the backside, his legs thrown over one of the arms. Is it like a child pretending? The to cockpit sleep shut, with their eyes closed, like really hard. Like... Yeah, exactly. No, he's yeah. not that young. It's oh, like okay. seventeen, eighteen. Okay, is the cockpit yeah. shut? Oh no, uh, it's no, it's open. Star H pod. Oh, it's open. Okay. It's kind of what's like a. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing, buddy? I know you're not asleep. Just so he takes in a deep breath and is just like pulls out his earphones and just like, yeah. Uh, I, what what's going on with you? Why why are you just chilling up here on the mech? It's when... my mech. Okay, that's true. But the Baron really needs to be up there to repair your said mech. There are other mechs to repair first. I just, I don't just just let the Baron is the Baron is a very stressed man that has to deal with a lot of just blown up stuff. All right, can we just can you just give this guy a break for a moment? Who How are you? I, a bandito, I, the guy who pilots the Wolverine. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, this this, this kid. All right, out of character. This kid's like the most angsty yeah exactly kid, yeah shit does he have like the zelda haircut <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> he's got one eye covered yeah it's so it's so good that you're up there and i'm not <laughs> yeah. it, for me the scene would have been like you know it would have been like bandito and baron like talking and bandito's like all right i'll take over it and he goes up and then like the camera just stays on the bear and like messing with his toolbox. And stuff. Here. And then the <laughs> <laughs> He's just uh, just like, listen, man, I don't know I'm... you, and I would answer to you. I'm guessing that is true, since I'm not. That's true. Not... Yeah. He's yeah. just like Yeah, I don't know where Riser is, but I haven't seen him since I joined the unit. So I've just been hanging out here until someone tells me what to do. All right. <laughs> that was like he got me on. I, I can't do much as he got me on sort of commit a uh, chain of command. So I like, mean, right, let's be clear. Chain of command in this unit has not been <laughs> uh, ironclad. It's more of a web of command. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. One made of loose spider silk. Yeah. yeah, at this point, I was like, who's going to listen to Benito? Of course, this kid doesn't know me. All right, here we go. I mean, are you backing down from this? I don't know yet. All right. How about this? Me and you, we go out, we get something to eat. You know, take a break. Because right now, we're not really needed here. We're just kind of in the way of people who are actually working here. 
except right now. What's you gonna give me a thing? ride? Uh, has no car. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you can get like an an Uber or a taxi or a rental. For the yeah, day. You, have a you can have a pirate. on planet. I thought we were like. Uh... You are on okay. planet. Yep. All right. Yeah. So here's the thing: you guys live at a you live at the hotel resort, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can bunk off of off of the ship, but this kid is still sleeping in his cockpit. Yeah, let's go. I'm, I got. I got a. Let's go out and get some nice food to eat. I'll get us there over or something. Or a Comstar Uber, wherever it might be. And uh, is that way Mr. Baron can work on the mech here? And So he starts standing up and stretching. And he's just like, this isn't a trick, right? No, why would it be a trick? Hmm. Why, what would, why would it be a trick? So he he gives you a look, and I'm gonna uh -huh. make a roll here. <laughs> the white dice always roll great. It totally goes to the Nope, they the roll horribly. And the uh, ship just takes off and leaves them both. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you suspiciously, Bandito, and he's like, Yeah, you do seem kinda like an idiot. is happening <laughs> i think he's not very trustworthy of people is that what people have been telling you is that i'm an idiot i haven't been really been talking to anybody i've heard quite you're a bit just, you're just, okay because let me tell you buddy there's a lot more idiots around here than me in fact there's a couple other people who's done some not okay things and i've been taking the blame for it those russians don't seem to like you uh, I don't seem to like the Russians either, so it's A-OK -okay with my book. The Russians actually like him a lot. So is it just that you don't like pirates, then? No, I have nothing wrong with pirates. Why? Hmm. Has people have been saying I don't like pirates? Because I don't really care either way. People have to make money somehow. Mm. So he's just like staring at you the whole time. I feel like the uh -huh. camera is doing this thing where it like is behind you and does like a wide pan and then switches behind him and does a wide pan and just keeps doing that back and forth. <laughs> I'm just, just sitting here is like trying to like just staring at me awkwardly. I'm just there. Just I'll go with you on one condition. Uh huh. That you buy a six pack of beer for me on the way back. <laughs> We have beer on the dropship. Yeah, but he doesn't know that. <laughs> he's sure literally he, he I mean it's he's literally never oh, been to the cafeteria. We have beer on the dropship, but it's all labeled property of McGurk. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure thing, buddy. All right, Bandito. Apparently you signed up for the big day out with the new mech pilot. Are you bringing anybody else with you? <laughs> I don't know who's gonna keep telling me around. <laughs> Do you invite anybody else to go with you? I don't care. Who's want to go? I don't think anybody wants do, to go with Bandito. Do you send out a come to your unit and just like, anybody want to hey go to lunch? <laughs> just, you, you send out a group text and like immediately afterwards, everybody's like, nope, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking right. instantaneous. Uh, yeah, you guys do. Lives? You do get a group text. She's from... probably too busy with stuff. I said, I probably tell you, it's like, hey, nine lives. Are you are you doing anything? Uh, you in you're you're texting her and you immediately get a call from her. Boo, 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 ba, boo, ba. This can't be good. May I answer. Say hello. Are you inviting me on another date? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Why do you keep thinking his dates? I have to stay on my guard around you. You keep inviting me out to eat at places with people who think we're a couple. We're not. No, this is not the same. That I was only just to keep up a ruse. All right. All right. She's squinting at. She's like, this is like we cut back to her. She's squinting at the phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, she's like, fine, I'll go with you, but if you try anything, you're gonna get the taser. Uh, it's, I wouldn't expect anything less. 
those two are so gonna get yeah. married when you hang up the phone howler is just like yeah so that's your girlfriend right <laughs> no she's yeah. not my girlfriend and don't say that to her because she will tase my ass quicker than you can say anything you want to say yeah you really shouldn't have told him that yeah you probably shouldn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just he does that thing that anime heroes do uh, where he like puts if, his if, hands behind his head, just looks off disinterested into the middle distance. And his pants come undone for no reason. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> just <laughs> super edgy. Oh, what about the rest and of if you? If you don't say it, no, this the entire is time, a... I'll make sure to get you another pack of root, of root beer. I feel like he's, he's just, the... he turns his head back towards you slow and he's like, root beer. <laughs> <laughs> I want real beer. All right. Can't believe you guys have a drinking age out here. How barbaric. I feel like when he sends a group text, you can just like from the other side of a wall, like through the bulkhead, you can hear like hysterical butch <laughs> laughing like, fuck no. <laughs> and then, but then you get the text back. It's just like, I respectfully decline. Your offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at the bottom of the back next to bar and say like, no, just shout it up at him. I think the message, the request uh, to Harridan is still locked on sending because he turned his phone off and hasn't turned it back on yet. <laughs> All right, it's Bandito's big solo adventure day. Uh, All right. So, what kind of restaurant do you go to? Uh, avoid anything that was a p- potential line to whatever type of mafia. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that hard because you guys have pretty much wiped out the mafia on the planet. Oh, was there only like four guys? I mean, you did wipe out a bar full of mafia dudes, including the planetary boss. That's fair. All right. It's not like the rest of them just sit around and are like, you know, now that the police are investigating us mafia folks, we should probably, I don't know, stay in operation. <laughs> That's, That's not a thing that mafia people do. Yeah, yeah. All uh, right. Instead, they plan uh, to kill you in probably, your sleep. Probably go somewhere decent. Probably about, I don't know. <laughs> I'm very bad at picking decent restaurants. That's okay. So decent. here's what happens. Uh, TGIF. What what yeah. clothes are you wearing when you go out? I don't know. Standard cowboy outfit. All right. So you're wearing casual clothes. Crimson goes in her fatigues and he's still in his jumpsuit and he hasn't had a shower in four days. Ugh. So when you arrive at, at the place, the the waitress is just like, oh, uh, is your son here from out of town to see you? Not. <laughs> One big happy family. No, My I don't have a son. Why are you asking? Slowly pulls oh. out her taser. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get you guys seated. All right. <laughs> bad. Just bad news are things that is not going to end well at all. So, uh, Nine Lives is staring daggers at you. Shit. And Howler <laughs> is just looking disinterestedly towards the salad bar. And it gets it gets awkward at your uh-huh. table pretty quickly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's staring daggers at me. Of course, I think I should be used to that at this point, shouldn't I? Yeah, sure. That's a, a standard... So, uh, uh, <laughs> it's more so awkward because of the kids. So, kid, what, what did you do before you got caught up with the one group there? Caught up? Before us. What do you mean? What, what was you, what, what was your deal before then? Are, are you recording this? No, I'm not. He turns and looks at Sar- Sergeant Crimson and is like, is she recording this? No, she shouldn't be. She's just like, no. Should I be? <laughs> no, you shouldn't be. Because there's no. Cut back to Haller. He's just like, well, she's the intelligence officer, right? That's why you guys brought me out here. You're the intelligence analyst. She's the officer. No, we're just out here. Want to have a nice bite to eat away from the dropship. The smelly, smelly dropship. Hmm, sure. Is the, is the AC still broken? In the dropship? Yes. The dropship oh, yeah. is still taking repairs. He's just like, well, fine. My deal with your unit was no pressing charges against me. Okay. So I'll tell you what you want to know. 
So what did you do before you were with the other guys before us? That was my life. Oh. I was born on the periphery. Can understand that. Yeah. When those guys defected from the Valkyrie, I went with them. Didn't really have a lot of choice, right? It's fair. Any family? Or was that just your family? No, I think they're back in the Valkyrie. Hmm. I wanted better than farming dirt for a bunch of pirates. So I learned to be a mech warrior. There's a lot of mech warriors, so you got to be good. It's very true. You also have to be very careful. You have to kill a lot of people, too. It's also true. <laughs> I noticed you guys don't really fight a lot. No, it's mostly because we're just here to defend, and honestly, I don't think it's each other that we fight or don't fight a lot. There oh, hasn't been well, a single knife fight since I got here. That's because we're a organized pseudo military group that don't tend to knife fight each other. Instead, you're if you're like my case, you have Miss Crimson over there pointing a cattle prod at me of almost 24 seven for whatever reason. Are you into that? I've heard that guys are into that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's extremely painful and I hate every second of it. The only time I actually asked for that was when I was staring at the guy who I hated the absolute most in the face and wanted to make sure someone would stop me. Why didn't you just kill him? Because I would go to jail and jail is not fun. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. In fact, I'd probably just be executed and won't be the point of killing the guy anyway. Well, at least you'd get revenge, right? For whatever it is. Well, it doesn't bring anybody back, though. So he gives you a really suspicious look and it's just like, I'm going to go try their Caesar salad. It's a good idea. Uh, before you go, Crimson grabs your hand and just is like holding you to the table. Oh, this can't be good. Yeah? She's just like, that kid is fucked up. And? You can't let him pilot a mech. And? You You're know, okay with like this. The... I mean, I'm pretty much the same as that kid. Except I was with mercenaries my entire life. He was just with pirates his entire life. She gives you a really disgusted look uh, and lets go of your hand and just like Shit, flags out you. flags out a waiter and she's just like I'm going to need a mojito. Two of them. In the background like Butch McGurk like walks across like the front of the restaurant and opens the door and then like sees people and like backs out <laughs> and like walk around. Like went, so to the, like, Wait, went to the same restaurant. I, so here, here's what happens McGurk. You leave right? And that's that's when it does it, like the grandpa Simpson where he like walks in. You, and walks you, back you start walking. We get the outside reflection of the space TGIF that you're in front of, and uh, the five Russians pull up in a hover bus and are just like, "My God, get in, get in! We're going for borscht." There's yeah, good one on planet. I totally do this Starsky and Hutch, like slide across the hood, you know, I'm like hop in <laughs> the back. Ba -da -ba 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, all of the Russians are wearing huge black sunglasses. They just like uh, hand me like reflective aviators. And I yeah, just put exactly. Just <laughs> so, so they're just like, yeah, we have to stay undercover here because all of the bartenders <laughs> really hate our unit. But we're about to go get hammered, man. They have like oh, big mustaches and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They hook McGurk up too. Big, big black glasses, <laughs> and huge fake like mustache. Mario mustache. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's once that scenario is now, just like maybe it was like. So, the way I see it for that kid is that this just this mercenary unit is a legitimate second chance for that kid. Where. 
if anything, right now, you've probably been dead in an exploded mech like most other people we see. That so really should stop she's them. holding her steak knife and like pointing it at you threateningly. Uh-huh. And she's just like, what are you, his father now? No. Well, who's going to take responsibility for this kid? Uh, Well, mainly his Lance commander. Oh, yeah. You're a real man there, Bandito. All right, move. I'm going to go get some salad while I figure out how to fix this. <laughs> fix what? <laughs> you really think I'm going to let some sociopath run around? So she started thinking about that as she's saying it. Yeah. She's like, wait a minute. She's just like, <laughs> <sociopath> run around. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks about his other Lance mates. Uh, uh, you really sure about that? I don't know. If it, have you met the Lance, the main mech Lance? Because, you know. I spend most of my time looking after you like a lost puppy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm not much different from my alliance mates. Because <laughs> they've done other shit too. Don't worry. She's literally just like pushing you. She's like, get out of the way. We're not okay. having this discussion without at God. least something to eat. Get my goddamn salad. Yeah, I just get out of the way. Uh. How do you envision the rest of this meal going for you? Probably awkward with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Crimson staring daggers at me still for whatever reason. Uh, shit, what was the kid's name? Uh, Halavi Crossroads. Crossroads just eating his salad or whatever, not caring at all. So, uh, what happens is he gives you the play by play of his life while in between, like, eating a steak, uh, telling you about like all the people he had to kill in order to become a pirate, all of the other pirates he had to kill in order to become a mech warrior. And like all of the other mech warriors he had to assassinate or poison in order to actually get a mech. Oh my God. We're going to kill this kid and dump him <laughs> in a dumpster quick. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, there's a growing look of horror from both your waitress and Crimson. <laughs> like every time your waitress comes by, she's just just like mortified. Uh, at one point, she stops and is like, "So, are you guys like an acting troupe or reading a script?" Uh, is your your costumes? Huh? It costumes? Costumes? Sure. Right. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Video's just terrible at lying. <laughs> Do we need to roll for it? I, I don't know whether she no, should be I'm calling like the police. Four, I believe. Yeah. So it's like, uh, sure, sure thing. Whatever you want to believe. You don't lady. see your waitress again for the rest of the meal. <laughs> the manager just comes by and is like, "Everything's all right here, right?" Yeah, exactly. Okay, just let me know if you need anything. That's my exactly what happens. My name's Tim. And uh, please only speak to me for the rest of your visit. That's canon now. <laughs> Manager Tim. Yeah, yeah. Manager just, just takes just note of everything. It's like, uh huh, uh huh. And then it's like, yeah, I really need to keep track of this kid. <laughs> need like a Lance transfer or something. He is in a different Lance from you. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So this kid does need a father figure, and unfortunately, it's going to have to be me. I'm Are you sure. saying that in front of him right there? No, just mentally. All right, good. You're just making a mental note. <laughs> You're not even my real dad. You're not even my real dad. <laughs> Bandito I... adopts the kid is something that chat wants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that's what that kid needs. A man who can die at any point in time because his mech has two different things of our ammo. He needs to be transferred to some other company. This is the only company they have. Yeah. Oh, Comstar. Of course. Yeah. You need to send him to Comstar for religious training. Oh, of course. It's, yeah. Uh, it's an awkward car ride back. Uh, yeah. But there's two, two six packs of beer in the back, I guess. <laughs> no, I just take the six packs of beer from like the, the fridge or something. <laughs> You just Back go into the, the refrigerator on the dropship and hand him two six packs. <laughs> post it notes this is property of McGurk. Just off. Knock him off. You're like, <laughs> uh, so he's just like, sweet. 
All right, kid. Just uh. So he, he opens a can of beer and starts drinking it, and then spits it out. He's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, it's terrible stuff <laughs> at first. Jesus. <laughs> I get used to it once in a while. Uh, and then he it's heads like back. Thirty proof beer. <laughs> Yeah. He starts heading back to his wolfhound, but like the wolfhound's half disassembled because the whole torso is open in order to get the arm in, and he's just like, huh. I don't really know where to go now. Well, there's you can go get a bunk at the hotel or We can do that. Yes. Has no one really been telling you what to do around here? Uh no. Who's your Lance Commander? Staff Sergeant Riser. I want to talk to this guy. Great. That's right, because he got he got assigned to the vehicles instead of the the mech lands. Yeah. Right. Yes, you can. Which makes total sense to me. <laughs> he just he just takes his two six pack. He's like, right, I'm gonna go get a shower then. Yeah, go go do that, buddy. As I guess now I gotta go find Riser. I feel like in the background, in in like picture in picture mode, we just got him like at the front desk of the hotel with two six packs on his shoulder, trying to check in. Trying to check front in. desk clerk is trying not to vomit from his smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are we following the continued adventures of Bandito here? I don't know. Does someone want to stop it? <laughs> I thought I was going to have a nice conversation with the Baron, but oh well. Yeah, no, let's cut back to that. Yeah, go <laughs> Meanwhile, ahead. Uh, the Baron's just like, oh, one of you, again. You think you mech warriors could stop stinking up my mech bay? What's the Baron's nationality again? He's, He's free world leaker. Okay. Well, pardon me, but I think I find myself quite clean compared to some of the other com some of my other comrades around here. I like how every single one of us talks mad shit <laughs> about the other three <laughs> constantly. So like have you seen those other pieces? <laughs> <laughs> His nationality, by the way, is half cowboy, half Austrian prince. Uh, okay. I just need to know what liquor to bring him whenever I, you know, need something from him. <laughs> Uh, he's just, just like, is there something that you need? I got a, a message from a family member, and I wonder, I'm wondering how in F do you know them? Hmm? Who exactly? Goldhirsch. Oh, of course, yes. I've known several members of the Goldhirsch family. Hmm. I've been passing around the mercenary lanes for the last 10 years. Oh, yes, yes, I recall the unit. Oh, if I remember, they're being assigned to the periphery, Draconis Combine. Mm -hmm. I think I might know your mother, kid. Yes, she sent me a message some time ago when we got on planet. Hmm. They're heading off to a new... Um, new job and surprisingly enough she came out of retirement for it you're shorter than i would have expected and not nearly as handsome as her father the second one's true and the shorter thing might be because i've been spent six years on the jump ships oh well it comes on such explorer cores <laughs> mm -hmm. well you're interesting Unlike your friends. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was um, fun sitting on top, um, sitting on, out on the outside of a jump ship in a Jenna bolt down to the hull. Yes, yes. Shame about that thing. Oh, I remember. I'm the one who had to keep up the upkeep on that thing. I remember yes. when we brought the slag back into the mech bay, too. Where were you jockeys when we needed help disassembling it? Now I'm working with all these natives. Have any of you actually considered taking a mech repair course? I I'll have, have you know, I have a doctorate. And I am a doctor. In mechanical engineering. <laughs> In human medical. 
Yes, well, when my arm falls off, I'll call you. When your yes. mech arm falls off, you call me. And but right now, one of those is time. happening far more often than the other. Yes, that is true. I have. I am actually considering it. Considering taking up the mech repairing course. Oh. Well, it's too bad that I'm not a teacher. Also, I hate you. <laughs> Why do you hate me? I hate your entire unit. Every single time you leave the mech bay, you come back, your mechs look like garbage. What? <laughs> My hey, mech seems to be... We faced down eight side. mechs last time. Do you, yeah. do you pop out of nowhere and just like, what? <laughs> come out from behind an ammo crate? Out of a, out of a toolbox? That's ridiculous. <laughs> It's like t Terry Crews uh, Old Spice style where he just appears out of it. He goes back inside. We resent that. We just both pull up in a motorcycle with a sidecar. <laughs> yes, if I, rec if I recall properly, my mech only sustained partial damage to its right side. Just the armor. Oh, well, if it's just partial damage, I'm sure it won't take me a week and a half to finish fixing. I mean, by that logic, he definitely hates McGurk the least, because I've had the best track record. I mean, you've only had to have your cockpit replaced once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, you've yeah. got messed up two times. I think I've had the best track record. No, no, McGurk has, his mech has been repaired the least out of anybody. Far and away. For sure. There have been Mine two battles been he's walked away with no most. damage. Mine has been far and away the most. <laughs> did you not get hit at all in the first shot in battle? I don't think no, so. I, think I mean, listen, Goldhurst blew up a mech, so that's fair. Yeah, freaking, he's definitely at the bottom of the list. It's not my fault. I got freaking um, DMC from freaking catapult <laughs> or DFA. DFA. You got DMCA yeah. claimed by the. Uh... <laughs> The catapult. It was soaring through the air. And then your all your systems just shut down. Except for the a big, eject button. Here's a fine. <laughs> a big thing saying "ye guilty" appeared on the screen in front of you before shutting God. down. Filed a counterclaim, but it'll be at least ninety months. Oh yeah, the, the AI, AI has to review it. Back. So yeah. Uh, he, he's just just like listen. There are several fine courses. Oh, we lost right again. There are several fine courses on planet. You know, that guy Kenneth Cross is offering several oh, mech repair. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the same thing as having a doctorate from the University of Atreus, but you might be able to get some undergraduate work. Mm. If I were to go through to get a um, training course, where about would I go other than Kenneth Cross? Hmm. Kenneth Cross is the best. Why would you want to train? Y anymore? Yeah, that's what he says. He's just like Kenneth Cross is the best. But I suppose if you weren't going to train with him, there are. Oh yeah, chat got that big O reference. Boom. I wondered if anyone would get it. Uh, if you are looking for some extra work, there might be some College of Machine Shopping on Planet somewhere. A weekend course with the militia. Hmm. Oh, thank you for the information. It was good speaking to a family friend so far away from Of course! Me. I'll invite you to the next poker night. I will be happily... I'll happily join it, and I'll bring some of my um, fine liquor stash. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that's when you hear a clanging noise, and the Baron immediately is just like, You there! Stop dropping that thing! <laughs> Just it's like highly explosive. It's just like that is an explosive. Right there. That thing belongs in a gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. specifically. So, uh, I feel like now's a good time to take the first half break, right? It's about ten o'clock, so yeah. 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 It's weird that this is actually the twelfth week we've been doing this. Uh and we've only got a few more episodes before we take a sh like a small break for the season two mm. release. I mean, we'll see. 
but it kind of feels like we're just getting started on this. Like when Okeanos or when most of my streams are at 12 episodes, I'm like, yeah, we're pretty well underway. But for this one, I'm like, this doesn't feel like we've been doing it for very long. It really? Yeah. It's been feeling really short. I feel like we're just now like cutting our teeth. They, yeah, uh, I think it's like mostly because the, the mech battles have taken most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, the mech battles have sunk up a lot of playtime, but you know when you're really enjoying yourself, time flies. Indubitably. We haven't even yeah. unlocked special pirate pilot abilities yet. I know. Damn. That's the good stuff, like where you no longer get penalties uh, for shooting while jump jetting. That sounds amazing. Yeah, well, it costs yeah. like 300 what? XP, and you have to have a shit ton of qualifications, where and the GM has to let you do it. Where does all when that do stuff it, exist? Uh, it's in... I mean, don't worry about it yet. Okay, all right. I'm not worried about it. Are you going to allow us to do those? Um, at some point, I will be picking ones for you guys. So this is how it'll go. I'll say that thing you've been doing sounds like you're working towards an ability. You regularly jump or you regularly heat sink or you regularly take long range sniping shots. Here's an ability you can work towards. You need to have this level of qualifications and then you have to pay an additional 200 experience and you'll unlock it. Cool. Uh, that sounds cool. Good. Yeah. That's good. So we'll be back in about seven minutes for the second half. Enjoy the break music, etc., etc., etc.